Today we're gonna to load Altair 8K Basic into this Altair 8800. We're gonna compare that to Southwest's 8K Basic running in the Southwest 6800 computer system. I have these two computers configured exactly the same. They're running original hardware. Altair is running Altair hardware. The Southwest is running Southwest hardware. I got 16K of RAM in each. That's comprised of four 4K RAM boards. I have a serial interface in each. That's to hook to the console. And then finally, each of them has their respective cassette interfaces installed. Uh, and both of those run at 300 baht. So very, very similar setups. Set up this way, the Altair in kit form was $1,540. Uh, the Southwest in kit form was 820. So right off the bat, the first comparison you have to make is that the Altair is almost twice the price for the exact same equipment. Now that price does include the cost of basic. In the Altair system, it was $75 for basic if you bought a computer and extra memory at the same time. If you didn't bundle it, then basic was actually $200 uh, if you bought it separately. That's $900 in today's money. So it's a pretty significant investment for basic. Southwest, on the other hand, charges $995 for basic. They didn't feel you could make money selling software because everybody could just copy it. So they basically gave it away for the cost of making the tape. Now in the previous video, I said it was $4.95. Come to find out that was actually 4K basic. 8K basic, they charge $9.95. Makes sense, takes about twice as long to make as a 4K tape. So it was $9.95 instead. All right, we're gonna go ahead and do a video cut and then we'll go through the process of booting each of these and compare the process of loading basic. As we've demonstrated in other videos, the monitor ROM in this 6800 made it very easy to load and save programs. Those programs were all exchanged in Motorola S record format as opposed to binary, which had a number of advantages, but it has one big disadvantage, and that is space. There's about a three to one overhead to use uh, S records versus binary. So when you get into something big like 8K basic, that translates into 24K of data transfer at 300 baud. And as we saw in the last video, that meant a 14 minute load time for 8K basic as S records, which is really unacceptable in that it could be done to, in four to five minutes. So shortly after they came out with 8K Basic, they also introduced a new tape format in which the start of the tape has a small bootloader, which then turns around and reads the 8K Basic payload, which is stored in a binary format. And that gets the timing down to just uh, four or five minutes, more like you'd expect from an 8K Basic. All right, so this procedure is very simple on the Southwest. All we do is this uh, enable data transfer from our cassette, we'll push play on the cassette recorder and hit load. And that's it. Pretty soon we'll see this light start flashing. Okay, data's coming in. Now this is not 8K basic. Instead, this is a binary loader that's been saved in S record format. That's why we can load it with um, swap bug that is coming in. And as soon as it finishes loading, it only takes about 15 seconds. Um, we're gonna go ahead and hit go. See, it's done, I'll hit go. Now the program we just loaded is in memory and executing, and it's gonna read the rest of the tape, and now the data's coming, which is 8K basic in binary format. Again, this whole procedure, including loading the uh, binary loader, takes about four and a half to five minutes. So um, much quicker than the 14 minutes before, and pretty much the same as we'll run into on the Altair. So I'm gonna go ahead and let this complete, and uh, while this is running, we'll go ahead and start the procedure on the Altair. In order to load 8K Basic into the Altair, the first thing we have to do is enter a bootstrap loader on the front panel in order to load from cassette. The bootstrap loader we put in is particular to the particular size of Basic, in this case 8K, the version of Basic, in this case version 4, and the device you're loading from, in this case the cassette reader. So we go in the manual and we find that particular bootstrap loader and now we put it in on the front panel. All right, it loads at zero, which we're already at zero. The first byte is 41. So you put in the 41 and press deposit, raise deposit, that puts that into address zero. All subsequent bytes, we can use deposit next. So the next byte on this is 302. So now we can do deposit next, and so the 302 went into address one. All right, so let's get going on this. We've got 37 and 61. 37. 61, 22 and zero, 333 and six, 17 and 330, 
333 and 7. 275 and 310. 55 and 167. 300, 351. And 3 and 0. Alright, so that's the entire bootstrap loader. Hopefully I got that right. Next, they recommended that you put in a leader detector in order to take care of synchronization problems you sometimes had with uh, the start of the tape and then having garbage in the UART. But I have a shortcut around that um, that seems to work just fine. So we'll skip entering the leader detector. That saves a bit of time. Now, before we hit run, we need to tell BASIC what type of serial port we're going to use. In these upper four bits, we're telling it we're using a 2SIO board. And then on these four bits, you have to tell the second stage loader what type of device the data is coming in from. 0011 tells that it's coming in from a cassette. All right, that'd be ready to run. So let's go ahead and reset. Make sure we're to address zero. We are. I'll hit play on the cassette and then run this. And then give it a second and then reset it and make it start all over. And what that does is give it a chance to clear out any garbage from the UART. And that's basically instead of the leader detector. All right, we'll let this go on now. It's going to take about another four and a half minutes from here to go ahead and finish. Overall, this process, if you're pretty good with the switches and you didn't have to dodge the camera so your hands work better, took about, um, takes about five and a half minutes. So about the same as the Southwest, maybe a little bit longer, a uh, little bit more difficult, but very similar. You saw that light pattern change. That was when we went from the bootstrap loader to the second stage loader that's on the tape. So this is a two-stage boot process, just like we did with the Southwest, where the ROM loaded a small program. That program then is loading the basic payload. Same thing here for a different reason. The bootstrap loader we entered on the front panel loads a small loader off the front of the tape. That loader then runs is what you're seeing now and completes the load process. So in comparison, the two processes are similar in time, about five minutes. Southwest is a bit simpler than having to use the switches. Uh, theoretically on the Altair, you go out and buy one of their prom cards and buy their multi-boot loader prom and you could avoid the switches, but then you've spent another $100, and these are already substantially different in price, so um, I felt to keep the comparison the same as possible that you shouldn't add those features when it was already more expensive. All right, at this point, uh, we're gonna go ahead and um, do a video cut, and we'll come back when this load is done. All right, so while I was over there doing the Altair, we can see that this one has finished. We're back to the swat bug prompt. And to execute BASIC, I just type G, and now we're in BASIC. Now it happens to use the same prompt that I used for my customized SWAT bug, but uh, this really is BASIC now. We can say print 2 plus 2, and there you have your 4. Okay, so to do a comparison, what we're going to do is load a program called CHASE. Um, I have that on cassette, and I'm going to load the exact same version into both machines. So to load from cassette in Altair, uh, excuse me, Southwest Basic, you say load and then the device number. We're on device number two, like we've seen before, like our load is number two. Uh, the cassette's already enabled for read, so I will just hit play and hit return. Okay, and pretty soon we'll see the data start coming in. That was a reader on, and there's a line of data. And what you'll see is this is basically one line at a time Every time you see it go off, it's the end of a line. So this is rather slow. It's doing its load in basically a full ASCII format, just as if you had done a listing and were reading it in from paper tape like the good old days. So this is slower than what we'll see over on the Altair, which saves a memory image very rapidly out with no carriage returns, no ASCII. It's all been compressed and tokenized already. Um, so the disadvantage here is this takes a long time. The advantage though, is this is a much more readily exchangeable format. You could theoretically take this tape and this cassette interface and stuck it in, stick it in as the console on a um, Altair and, and load this program into an Altair with this cassette. Whereas you could never do that with the Altair, which is saved in an internal format. Um, and actually on the Altair, that internal format changed between versions of BASIC. So a version 3.2 ca cassette was not compatible with version 4. And then when Extended Basic came out, those could read from cassette, but weren't compatible with tapes you had saved before. 
So that was one of the downsides of that. So this slower format used here is a bit of a trade-off. Um, it's not as quick, but then it's more universally usable since it's just straight ASCII. So that one's kind of a hard trade-off to say which is better. But anyway, so this process will finish um, almost three minutes, about two minutes, 50 seconds, and then we'll go ahead and do the same thing over on the Altair and see how long it takes. All right, that light transition tells us that the load is completed. I'll go ahead and stop that. And now 8K Basic is running instead of the loader. Let's go over here and take a look at the screen. All right, we get the standard memory size prompt. I'll just hit return there and terminal width, hit return. We'll say yes for want sign, cosine. All right, and we have Altair Basic up and running now. So we can do the same thing here as we did over on the Southwest and see that we're up and running. All right, I'm gonna also load the, uh, the Chase program onto this computer. To do that, you use the C load command and then you follow it with a single character that had to have been the character used when it was saved. I saved this with the letter C for Chase and so that's the command. Let me get the tape deck to the right spot. All right, and I'll hit play and I'll hit return here. Now, as I mentioned, when I was uh, loading the program on the Southwest, this is much quicker. It takes about a minute and 15 seconds. And so it's a little over twice as fast. Um, again, because it saves it in internal format. So the advantage is Loads and excuse me, loading and saving programs is quicker. The disadvantage is it's not quite as portable, and you even have version problems as um, Altair themselves went from version 3.2 to version 4 and then to extended basic. Um, but anyway, we'll just do a video cut when this is done, and then we'll be ready to run the program on the two machines. All right, we have the Chase program loaded into both computers now. We have the Altair on the right and the Southwest Technical on the left. Let's go ahead and run the program. And I'm gonna say no to instructions. I have to step around this tripod so it always takes a little while. All right, so before I hit return on both computers, um, I'm gonna tell you what's gonna happen. This thing has to first calculate a game board and that involves a number of calculations, mainly random number generation and, and making sure it generates a valid game board. Game board's roughly 20 by 20 or so, I think. So there's a number of calculations to do that in floating point, and then it has to turn around and render that board on the screen. So that involves computing um, X and Y positions for print tab statements, that kind of thing. So more computations. So let's go ahead and hit return on both of these now and see how long it takes for the game board to come out. What you'll see is that the Altair gets it done much sooner. There it is, it's done already. And you can see the game board renders relatively quick. The X's are the outer border. All the X's internally are electrified obstacles you have to avoid. The plus signs are enemies that are coming to get you and you're that asterisk. Okay, over on the left, the Southwest just finished. So not only did it take longer to render the, or generate the game board, you see the rendering process is much slower as well. It has nothing to do with IO speed. That's just simply because all the calculations are required to say uh, the X positions take a while. All right, so right off the bat, you would certainly agree that uh, Altair is much, much faster, and um, that might say, well, it's got to be better. And depending on what you're doing, that might be true. But if you were actually using this for accounting, then you'd actually have a problem with the Altair compared to the Southwest. The Southwest is so slow on this application because it does all arithmetic in decimal and carries nine significant digits. So it's very good for anything involving lots of addition, subtraction, um, where you need accurate numbers like accounting. The Altair uses a 32-bit floating point number, which has only about six significant digits carried most of the time. So if you were doing accounting and anything with $100,000 or more in cents, you're gonna be losing dollars all over the place. Let's take a quick look. So let's say you had one, two, three, four, five, six point 10 cents plus two, three, four, five, six, and 25 cents we've completely lost our cents. So it only takes a few calculations and you're off by dollars before you know it. Over here on the Southwest, 0.10 plus one, two, three, four, five, six, point 0.25. And you can see we've got our right answer, including our cents. So if you're doing anything with numbers like accounting, 
then this Southwest Basic would actually be your better choice. If you need something fast or just want your games to work, then the Altair is probably your better choice. Now for the Southwest, you did have other options. You could run Altair Basic on this if you wanted, uh, but of course it was expensive. There were also other basics available, including integer basics, sort of like Apple did in the early days. An integer basic would just fly even faster than the Altair, um, although you do have to rewrite programs a bit to do some of the math um, without using floating point numbers, but for your games, that was usually not that hard to do. All right, so the winner, the better. I can't really tell you for sure. There's multiple trade-offs um, as we went through the process of loading programs, loading basic itself, uh, the speed you hear, see here versus accuracy. Um, then again, the Southwest was dramatically cheaper. So that one thing is, is still something you have to keep in the front of your mind. Plus, you could always find a fast basic if you needed to, um, including even Altair's. What we're going to do in the next video is a very interesting demonstration of running Altair 8K Basic on the 8800 and then also running Altair 8K Basic on the Southwest Technical Product 6800 because they did, Altair did port 8K Basic to the 6800 processor for their own 6800 computer, the Altair 680. Um, and that's gonna be an interesting demonstration that kinda of help us see how does the 6800 compare to the 8080. And that's what we'll take a look at in the next video.